All right, Petrina is talking about how to finance your podcast and how to essentially how to prepare financially to start a podcast. And Petrina, go ahead and take it away. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I am going to talk about how to prepare financially to start your po podcast. I'm going to give you five tips on how to prepare for costs associated with your podcast. Let me first tell you a little bit about me. My name is Petrina Dixon, as Andrew mentioned. I am the founder and CEO of my trademark brand, It's My Money. And guess what? I'm also a podcaster. My podcast is called The Money Exchange. It's an audio podcast where I interview people about um, that have had great money and entrepreneurship journeys. So again, it's called The Money Exchange. I'm also an international best-selling author. My book is also called It's My Money. And I use what I learned in writing that book to create courses that I have, as well as moving into the podcast space. And I'm also a wife and mom. Those are actually two of my favorite roles. So that's a little bit about me. You'll hear more about my story as I go along. So tip number one, Know your why. Why do you even want a podcast? Before I start telling you to prepare financially, you have to understand your why, because your why is what will motivate you. Your why is what will keep you going when a guest cancels, if you have a, a show with guests. It will be your why when you know you have to batch some content and you really don't feel like it, it will encourage you to do that. So know your why. On the page, I have a few examples of why. Brand awareness, improve your speaking skills, meet new people like me. I interview people on my show. So I get to meet various fantastic people that have wonderful stories. I go to various different conferences and I ask people to be on my show based on their story and how it relates to my followers. Are you doing it just because you want to have fun or you want to educate people on a topic that you are well versed in? So these are some of the common reasons that people podcast. So you have to determine for yourself why you're going to podcast. Tip number two is determine your equipment need. So I have several things on the page. So I'm going to walk through each of them. But again, this is about starting a podcast. So somebody that's been podcasting for five, six, 10 years and do it full time, they may have some sophisticated uh, type of equipment. You starting off can start off with what I'll call the bare minimum, and then you can evolve as you go along. So let's start off with number one. I use laptop because I actually use my laptop for, um, for podcasting. If you do not have a laptop, that will be something that you need to purchase. If you have one, maybe it needs to be upgraded, things of that nature. Secondly, you would need microphones. This really, really helps with the um, audio quality uh, for your podcast. And then you need headphones. This also contributes to audio podcasts, especially when you have a show where you're interviewing someone. The next thing is recording so software. This is an item that I think you can graduate to because there's a lot of free audio uh, recording software that's out there that you can use for your podcast. And then followed by the audio mixer, which again is something you can evolve to. So what you need to do is determine the equipment that you want to use for your podcast. It can be basic, as I said, with one and two, or you can go as far as everything that I have on the page. You have to research and determine the cost of the items that you want to use to start your podcast. So again, you can go with one and two only and notice that number two actually has two items, the microphone and the um, headphones. And then you can go into three and four. Once you determine what those costs are, you want to make sure that you itemize those by those items. So if you don't have a laptop, how much will it cost to get you one? If you have one, how much it costs to get more space on the laptop? Same with the microphone and headphones. Then I encourage you to use a budgeting tool. Now, I have the word tool here, but I recommend, especially for people that's never budgeted before, I recommend you use pen and paper. The reason why I recommend that, because if you haven't budgeted before, using pen and paper will allow you to become very intimate with your finances. And you may be saying to me, I'm only buying a laptop, headphones, and 
um, a microphone. What do you mean intimate with my finances? Why I need this tool? Because budgeting for your, for your podcast needs to be integrated into your overall budgeting. Oh, I didn't tell you, I'm a personal finance coach. So this is why I'm pulling in budgeting and preparing for your to finance your podcast. So you want to ensure your overall budget, which includes your expenses for everything, that the things that you want to purchase for your podcast is incorporated into there. And we'll talk about that in a second. So choose a budgeting tool. If you've never budgeted it before, pen and paper. I have some other options here. Maybe it's Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet for you. Maybe it's the notepad on your phone. Maybe it is a budgeting app like You Need a Budget, which is also affectionately known as YNAB or YNAB, that, or Mint or Personal Capital. These are various different apps that you can also choose to use to prepare you overall for budgeting, which will now include the items you need to start your podcast. Now you have to create your budget. So again, with your budgeting, and if you don't like the word budgeting, it's okay. It's your spending plan, what you're going to do with your money. The number one thing that you need to do is write down all of your income. So if you have a side of main job, a side hustle, uh, you own your own business, whatever it is, if you're retired and you get pension, whatever it is where you're getting income from, you want to start with that. Then you want to track all of your expenses, not just the podcast, podcast ones that we talked about, but all of your expenses, mortgage, rent, car payment, uh, lights, gas, um, any expenses that you have on a regular basis, you wanna put that down. So if you get paid every month, then you wanna revisit your budget monthly. If you get paid every two weeks, you wanna revisit it every two weeks. Then you wanna include the podcasting items that you want. So remember you did the research earlier in tip number two, you, wanna, you now have how much it costs for the laptop or the extra space you need on your current laptop, how much you need for the headphones, how much you need for the microphone. So it may take you, depending on how frequently you get income in, a few income cycles before you're able to purchase the various different podcast items. You always want to make sure that you're taking care of your needs before your wants. And the podcasting or starting the podcast is one of your wants. You want to ensure that you include them into the budgeting and if you can't get them all at once, it's okay. You may want to upgrade the laptop first. Boom, you have that one down, check that off. The next pay cycle, maybe you then get your headphones. And then the next pay cycle, maybe you then get your microphone or whatever other podcasting things, things you think you need for your podcast or want for your podcast. The goal is it needs to be incorporated into your overall budget so you're not blowing the budget in order to start this new endeavor in podcasting. Again, remember I told you, if you already have a laptop, you may be able to use that. I remember when I first started podcasting, I was literally driving to a studio. Before I did that, scheduled studio time, driving to a studio. So that was gas plus my time to get there, plus the time it took me to schedule it go to the podcast, uh, go to the studio, and then have my guest on once we were all done, leave the studio and drive back home. I then coming to like PodFest and other events like this learned, you don't have to do a podcast in a studio. So when you look at what people are doing today that may have been podcasting for some time, you don't have to mimic that just yet especially when you're starting out, you can utilize like right now, I'm taking this right in the hotel room, my husband and I went on a road trip, and I'm here with my laptop being able to still deliver this to you. So consider the tools you already have, maybe there's an upgrade needed, but maybe not a full new device. And then I certainly recommend brand new, the microphone and the headphones. 
So you uh, want to do some research, you can either research by going online in uh, Amazon, Google, go into brick and mortar stores, or uh, PodFest has a bunch of people that's on here that are podcasters within uh, the time frame that the expo is going on. And you can listen to what other people are doing, what they're suggesting. Maybe you're a winner of something. I don't know. But you want to keep your ears to the grind to see if what you need, because you identified that first you understand the costs, and then you find opportunities to get what you need included in your overall budget, because I do not want you to blow your overall budget, not pay a credit card, not pay a bill because you're trying to fund this endeavor. The last thing here says, appreciate delayed gratification. And what that means is you're gung-ho, you're leaving the podcast, uh, the PodFest 2022 Expo, and you like, I want to start a podcast right now. And you just go out and buy all the things that I just talked about. But yet you didn't pay your bill. Even if your bill is not due to next week, it just was not the time. I encourage you to appreciate delayed gratification. And what that means in the start of podcast realm, if you left the um the expo at when it concludes because hopefully you're attending more sessions um and you want to begin start your podcast if you're not a podcaster or even if you are podcasting and you need some new stuff please please pause for a moment and ensure especially from a financial standpoint that you're ready if there's a purchase that's needed uh to begin your podcast or to evolve your podcast at the bottom of this page, in all of the pages actually, I do have my website here. If you go to my website and go to the resources tab, I do have three budget sheets that can help you um, track your expenses and your income manually. So it's with paper, you'll have to pull it down, print it, and then use it that way. So that way you can integrate your podcasts and desires within your overall budget. And then the fifth tip is if within your budget, you're like, by the time I pay my car payment, my rent, my mortgage, all of these things, I don't have any room to buy, upgrade my laptop or buy a laptop or to buy a head, buy some headphones or a microphone. So then it may be an opportunity for you to make additional money on the side. There's a ton of ways that you can do that. Again, remember when I talked earlier about budgeting, I talked about starting with income and have it be all your income, not just the income from your main source, but where you get other money from. Maybe it's affiliate marketing, maybe it's side hustles, eBay, selling things on Amazon, or if you're already a podcaster, maybe you um, incorporate mugs or t-shirts uh, from your podcast to sell so that you can get more money for whatever it is you want, more space, uh, a newer mic or whatever microphone or whatever it is that you want. So the fifth tip is within that budget that we talked about earlier, which is an identification and awareness of all of your income, all of the expenses you need to pay out, and including your new want, which is buying things to become a podcaster, there may not be enough money for you to do this, um, this thing called podcasting, right? It's a wonderful thing. And so maybe it is making some additional money and there here are ways to do that. Now, the thing that you want to consider is your podcast does not need to start today. Can it? Absolutely. But again, if you want to do it where you don't have stresses of finances, make sure that you do it when you can afford to integrate the things that we talked about. And I'm going to give you some bonus tips. You're going to hear a lot of people talk to you today. We're going to talk to you about a lot of different things, financing your podcast, social media content, monetizing the podcast, et cetera. What I want you, especially for this track in this session, is when you um, take in and let everything that was shared today um, marinate, I want you then to execute. Because it's one thing to come to the conference, get all of this great information from all of us that are sharing it with you, but you have to execute. You have to do something. And what I want to say for the, those of you considering podcasts, just start and have fun. If it's not fun, then why are you doing it? This picture to the left, if you're wondering, this was one of the first pictures uh, when I stopped going to the studio and I was doing the uh, my podcasting at home. This was one of my first mics. I do have another mic now. And um, 
I was right there. You see my laptop is on top of a box because I didn't have the thing to level it up, but I was still producing shows still producing shows. This was me preparing. You see, I have my guests, they send in a write-up, their bio, and I was writing additional notes as I be, continued to research on them. So I love what I do. I love talking. I love sharing. I love helping folks with tips regarding their money and entrepreneurship. And that's exactly what my show was about. The Money Exchange Podcast is about sharing with people how to do their money differently, how to think about it differently, how to share with them people that have done it. So they, I know that it works and you can feel like you can do it too. And again, have fun. Your podcast may be about cats. I'm not a cat lover, but there's a lot of people that love cats. So you can talk about cats. You can talk about what you're doing about cats. Maybe it's about the military. Maybe it's about coffee. It can be about whatever it is that you want it to be about. And that's why I started off with know your why. Why do you want to podcast? Why do you want to become a podcaster? Once you identify that, then it goes into what do you need in order to make that a reality? And then how do you fund it? So you fund it by incorporating the things that you want specifically. Headphones cost 100. Microphone costs 70. You know, exactly that way incorporate it into your budget. And then once you acquire those things, get started. It's important to execute and again, to have fun. I, um, I wanted this very nice microphone, which you don't see here in the picture. This one is a good microphone to start off. I had that one for, I think, two years. And then I wanted another one. I didn't buy it right away because I had delayed gratification because the one that I have right there was working fine. I couldn't justify for myself not that I didn't even, that, that I didn't have the money, but why am I buying the other one? Because it's cute. Do you see it in the, in the shot right now, in the little screen that you see my face? No. So why was it important for me to have a mic that's nice that nobody sees but me in my home, in my little office with the door closed, trying to have a, a good sound? So I decided to keep this microphone, not until I can afford the second one, but until that one didn't work anymore. I bought the next one when that one no longer worked and it didn't no longer work because it was bad quality. I dropped the thing like three or four times, maybe seven or 10. The point is don't think that everything has to be the most expensive in order to give the quality that you need when you first start off. There is, um, there will be opportunity for you to evolve to the show you want, to the equipment you want, but you don't need those things to get started. Again, have fun and execute. Andrew, I'm sorry, I didn't know about questions. I didn't think about questions. Hold on, I have one more slide. So <laughs> yeah. my name is Petrina Dixon. I wanna make sure that I share that with you. I can be found across social media on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at it's my money underscore. Oh, look at this picture I, before I forget this. This is the one that I was actually in the studio. So you see the drast, drastic difference? The other picture I had was, you know, on my desk in my home office with my laptop and a microphone and some headphones. This one was in the studio. This is when I used to go to the studio. If you go back and listen to my shows, I, I'm so excited to say I have 98 episodes published. You start to see the show evolve in graphics in sound and as it evolved in sound, it was sound at home. This quality of the studio by far is awesome, but, it, but my show still sound well doing it with the item that you saw on the last page. Okay, so let me get back to who I am. My name is Petrina Dixon. I am a podcast host across social media. You can find me at it's my money underscore. My podcast is called The Money Exchange. On Instagram, it's The Money Exchange Podcast. I also 
now produce my shows or publish my shows on YouTube. So now that my show has evolved in 2022, 21, I began bringing, uh, doing my show on Zoom as the platform that I get the audio in video. And then I put the raw video on YouTube. So I evolved to that. I haven't, I didn't always do that. So when the show, there's no bloopers or whatever have you, that one goes right on YouTube, which again is free. And then and the um, audio is edited, and then I have an intro and outro put in there in the mid roll, and that is across all the audio platforms. So again, the evolution of your podcast can happen, but to start, budget, incorporate the items you want in the exact amount of how much they cost, and plan to prepare for your show. And I see a lot in chat, so let me just see if I can take a look at that. Sorry about that. Um, oh, people are talking about uh, the various different mics. Um, slaved, <laughs> saved up for a blue Yeti. I didn't say it was a Yeti. Maybe it was. I don't know. <laughs> I just know it's, it, it's, I have it now, the one that I wanted. Um, let me see. Okay, let's see. I have some more questions here. Um, I just wanted to start. The question is start, start, start. However you can start. And what you will find, you can't perfect something that is not there. So when you have your first show, you can then listen to it and determine what you need to do next. Determine what's next. Maybe it's not the auto, auto audio quality. So that's not the new item you need. Maybe it's the visual if your podcast is going to be um, a visual one. Um, you want to have a quality mic with your smartphone. Quality does not. Exactly. Quality does not mean expensive. Thank you, Avis, for that. Quality does not mean expensive. It does not mean expensive. I want to make sure you understand that. That first microphone I had, it was microphone and headset. I think together some time ago now on Amazon, I think it was like $70. Those two pieces does not mean expensive. Uh, congratulations on your podcast. Thank you. Um, let's see. Katrina, you're amazing. Ah, Amy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, I don't know, uh, Andrew, if you want me to uh, take more questions, I can't read them that quickly. I wanna make sure that I'm answering them. I don't know if these are just comments or questions. Um, listen, um, all of you out there, um, I'm trying to find my quote. I'm gonna try to paraphrase. Procrastination is what held a lot of, what holds a lot of people back, but you are the owner of your timing. If you are ready, and ready means you're here today, so you've made the first step, so the only thing between you and starting is you. So hopefully as you're here and listening to the various various um, speakers share with you all of their tips, that's what we do really well, which I love uh, Pop Fest for, is all of us come because we want to make sure that you know what we've done and what you can learn from so you don't have to go through some of the things we already have gone through. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Avis, you're, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. How was your podcasting? How has your podcasting process evolved since you started? So I, I talked earlier that I started in um, going to a studio. The studio was about 35 minutes from my house. So it took a lot of time to record one episode because it then had to be edited. So it's evolved in, I don't do that anymore. It's evolved in, I am better prepared for questions for my guests because my show is an interview show because I did a lot of people that I had on in the beginning I knew them so I would just wing it right um now even if I know them I have them when they uh when they set up a time to record with me they send their bio along with their social pages and their email or not the email address their website if they have that and I go and do research so that I could become more familiar with what they what they're doing what they would like to do their mission so that the questions um, don't sound robotic. And I do not, which I used to, I do not send questions ahead of time so that people rehearse them. And then I really don't like the comment, oh, that's that, that wasn't a, on the list of questions. So I want it to sound like an organic conversation. So I just become really um, a student of the person that I'm having on my show so that the conversation, they can just speak freely because it's about them. And I know more about them because I did the research. So that's how um, 
that's how it's evolved in those ways. And the other thing about me doing it at home, this is another way that it's evolved. When I was going to the studio, I was subject to the hours of the studio. I was subject to the availability, not just of the room, but of the other person that had to be in the room with me to you know, work the technology. Like this board you see on this picture, somebody had to do that. I didn't know how to do that. I just knew how to be at the other end of the mic. Now, I own my time. I own when I record. The, the Even the guests, if they go and uh, take the link and sign up to be on my show, it's on my available windows that it's on my calendar. So that's how it's evolved. And now I also have an operations manager. I didn't have that before I was doing everything. So I'm uh, my business have evolved. So podcasting is one of those things. So I have somebody that's now taking, my, um, taking the, the show editing it out for things that need to be edited out, but then adding my music in the beginning, if I have sponsors or whatever, um, I'm adding those pieces to the meat of the podcast. So those are ways that my show has evolved. Um, me too, Katrina, I do the same, even if I know them. Exactly, exactly. It lends itself, the listener would can tell the difference in the show. Like, do you know this person? Is this person random? So um, it definitely, makes for a better show. Um, what is your monetiza monetization strategy today with podcasting? Sponsors, affiliate courses, newsletter. This is a really good question, Boris. Um, I can tell you one thing. Let me start with and plug podcast, pod fest, um, expo. There's a lot of people out here that's um, full-time podcasters. I'm not a full-time podcaster. And I come, one of the reasons why I come and started coming to PodFest is learning how to monetize my show. And I, my show is not fully monetized or fully sponsored, but I do have all of what you said here. So I have, um, I have had businesses sponsor episodes. So they may sponsor, you know, episodes for a month. They may sponsor episodes for a core, you know, a topic if I'm running a topic. So it really depends. Sponsorships um, can be very specific and you, you can pitch to certain brands that you want to sponsor. What I would encourage if you're starting off to pitch small business owners and the way that I did it, because I have a lot of um, small business owners that are, are mid roles on my uh, podcast. So I, sometimes I do the voice. My husband does the voice voice over. Um, what I say to them is your, my podcast, which it is, is has global listenership. I talk about how many listen per episode, things of that nature, how, and that the fact that I, um, I socialize it across all of my uh, social platforms. And I talk about, uh, the episode, if it airs, I'm making this up May 27th. That's the day it's published, but that baby lives on forever. So people can listen to that podcast forever and ever and ever. So it gives them um, advertisement, not just for the day the show airs, but for as many times people listen to it from now to whenever. So um, that's a way that you can do it. As it pertains to affiliates, yes and yes and yes and yes. Um, I, I'm an affiliate of, gosh, maybe almost 40 different partnerships I have from affiliates that I regularly use. I'm an affiliate of more um, that I get off of platforms. I won't go deep into that because I actually teach people um, to become affiliate marketers. But yes, I do have affiliate links within my show notes of my podcast. So sometimes the guests that come on my show, they have courses or things like that. So I become an affiliate of their course and that goes into this, my affiliate link goes into the show notes for their particular course, if that's what we're um, promoting. But if I don't have if the affiliate or the guest does not have an affiliate link, then I drop my own product link. So I have products, I have courses and things of that nature. So I drop those in the show notes. And then um, as far as newsletters are concerned, I actually have a weekly distribution of a newsletter and I put my episodes in there as well to, in to increase people listening to the various different episodes. So Boris, I hope that helped. Um, Reclaim. Yeah, we to transition to this next speaker here, Patrina, but real quick, actually, I do want to get a uh, screenshot um, of you. Can you go back to one of your slides? Uh, one, of, one of your favorite slides. And Mark, I'm going to turn off your camera for just a second here. Um, you can, you can turn it back on. Um, I'll turn my camera off. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So um, we're going to do a little pose here. Uh, all right. Ready? Three, two, one. Ooh, looking good. All right. Perfect. Um, awesome. Well, Patrina, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for 
uh, a wonderful presentation about owning your money. It's your money. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's, it's very, very inspiring. Um, and uh, yeah, you're, you're sounds like you're pretty active in the Whova app as well. So we can see you there. All right, great. Uh, Andrew